Hey guys, it's Will with Vinyl Appreciation Society. Welcome, welcome. This is a kind of a random supplementary video. Before I get into everything, if you could click the subscribe button. If you are watching on YouTube, that would be great. Thank you so much. You could give us a thumbs up. You could give us a comment. You could let us know what you think about this video. So what are we talking about today? I'm gonna to be talking about Bob Dylan, Don't Look Back. I have two copies of it right here, different editions. And the, so I'm gonna talk about two things. The Criterion Blu-ray release and I'm gonna tie that into, I wanna like address the Donovan thing because this comes up a lot in kind of the narrative surrounding this film with fans, with critics, with commentators on the internet who I don't know if they are or not, fans or critics, what their relationship to the film is, but it's something that just gets brought up a lot that I perceive to be completely different from kind of the, the primary narrative that people perpetuate with regards to the relationship between Bob Dylan and Donovan as portrayed in this film. So. First, I'm gonna talk about this edition. So I got this from the Criterion Flash Sale a couple weeks ago, and I was sick this week. And so I, um, I stayed at home, and I watched Don't Look Back on the Blu-ray. I watched 65 Revisited, which is a 2006 alternate cut, basically, where D.A. Pennebecker, who's the filmmaker, went back to the original footage, used a whole bunch of outtakes, and made a different movie. It's like a 65 minute long thing that focuses as much on the music as it does on the behind the scenes stuff, like ratio wise, it has a lot more live performances than the original cut of the movie does. Um, there's audio commentary here from um, Bob Newirth and Pennebecker, which is also on this. So some of the special features that are on this are also on this. So this is the 1999 edition from um, DocuDrama, uh, which was released this on DVD. And this is actually my dad's, and I asked him if I could borrow it, like, almost 10 years ago. <laughs> and um, I, obviously, I never gave it back to him. But um, So it has extra performances, and uh, it has the commentary on here. It has um, an alternate version of the Subterranean Homesick Blues thing, which you'll be familiar with if you're a Dylan fan. Um, where instead of him going through the lyrics in the alleyway, it's on a rooftop and it's really windy, so the cards are like blowing everywhere and they kind of like fly off the roof. It's pretty funny. Um, this, the stuff that's new to this is there's an kind of like an intro type thing with Patti Smith, which is really interesting, where she talks about how Bob Dylan was a huge influence on her and then she finally met him backstage at one of her shows in the 70s in New York City. It's really interesting. Um, it's about 10 or 15 minutes long. And then there's a there's a conversation between Pennebacker and Grail Marcus. Now, I really love Grail Marcus's writings. He's a journalist, music journalist. I kind of found him to be, like, insufferable in the conversation. But the stuff that Pennebacker said and the way that Pennebacker responded to the stuff that Grail Marcus was saying, I found really fascinating. So it's definitely worth the watch. Um, but, I mean, the, just the stuff on here is amazing. Like, there's 25 extra minutes of outtakes during which there's this thing where Bob Dylan is just like sitting there smoking a cigarette and there's a, uh, an, an English guy, I think it's Alan Price, who was at one point in The Animals. He's there, Bob Newirth is there, Dylan's producer is there, whose name I can't remember off the top of my head, and Alan Grossman is there, who's Dylan's manager, who's like a big presence in the movie. And um, they're talking about what defines soul music. And it's just really, really interesting to see these people who are professional musicians, record producers or whatever, who are really heavily influenced by the blues and jazz and soul and things like that, like talking about how they define these different types of music. But um, the, th the thing that I, like I said, I wanted to tie this into the Donovan thing. So the audio for the Criterion Blu-ray edition was, they recorded the audio on, so if you don't know, D.A. Pennybacker, who made the film, was one of like the first people, if not the first person, to create a completely portable rig that was both audio and 60 millimeter film at the same time. This was in 1965. And the type of tape that he used to record the audio was, um, is very rare. And so they had to find a guy who's like a roadie for Kiss, apparently. He's like a huge, huge vintage audiophile. And he hand built a, um, like a tape deck so, so that he could transfer the original tape recordings to like a new medium basically so that they could digitally upgrade it and like perfectly preserve it for the Blu-ray transfer. And in, in doing that, one of the things that they found was there's a very famous scene in this movie where Donovan comes to Bob Dylan's hotel room, Donovan the folk singer from Scotland. And he plays one of his songs as everyone's like sitting around drinking and 
Then Dylan takes the guitar and he plays It's All Over Now Baby Blue. And the perception of this among a lot of fans is that Dylan played It's All Over Now Baby Blue right after Donovan played his kind of like trivial, silly, like kind of like pop folk song to like bury Donovan basically. Like, look, here's one of the greatest fucking songs ever written and I'm gonna play it in front of all these people and I'm gonna make you look like a tool or whatever. But you can, in the, in the remastered audio, you can actually hear Donovan say to Bob Dylan as Dylan takes the guitar from him, will you play It's All Over It Now Baby Blue? So the reason that Dylan plays the song is that Donovan requests it. And there's this whole thing about, there's this whole narrative about how supposedly Dylan hated Donovan and he wanted to show him up and he wanted to make him look like an idiot in the movie and stuff. And D.A. Pennebecker says in the interview, one of the interviews on this, on this Blu-ray, that Donovan actually came to the hotel before the night that they shot all that footage and he said to Dylan, or Dylan said to Pennebacher, don't film this. Like, I don't want Donovan to think that we're letting him into our hotel room or that we're agreeing to meet with him or that we're going to hang out with him because we want him to be part of the movie or that I'm using him as a foil or whatever. Like, I want to just meet him and talk to him and be, like, polite to him because Donovan is a huge Dylan fan. And Donovan actually played a new song for Dylan that he had written that was, like, an exact redo of Mr. Tambourine Man but with different lyrics. And Dylan was kind of like, oh, that's interesting. I feel like I've heard it before. And Donovan didn't realize that Mr. Tambourine Man was a Dylan original song. He thought it was like a folk song that Dylan had covered. And like he apologized for it, but according to D.A. Pennebacher, Dylan was very, very polite to Donovan and didn't want to embarrass him and didn't want to make him feel like they were bringing him there as like a foil for this movie. And in early in the film, Dylan is like cutting out pieces of newspaper, making a collage in his hotel room, and there's different stuff of Donovan up there, and he's saying stuff like, oh, Donovan, who's this guy Donovan? I hate him already, and like, he, he's obviously just being silly and like taking the piss, like he, it's so clear to me that he doesn't hate Donovan, and he's just being silly, and that this whole narrative, especially with this new remastered audio and the things that Pennebacher says in the interview, it just doesn't make sense to me. And if you've ever been, like, if you're a creative person, if you've ever spent time around other artists, if you're a musician, and, like, especially if you're a musician, right, when you're in a room, what's happening in this scene with Donovan where they both play guitar is that Donovan, Dylan, um, a couple other folk singers whose names I can't remember off the top of my head, I think Joan Baez, I mean, Joan Baez is in the film because she was dating Dylan at the time, and she's there, but there are, like, other British folk singers who, like, showed up who are a little bit older, of like, an older generation of folk singers hanging out, and everyone's drinking, and there are a few people who are, like, really drunk, and the guitar comes out, and it's getting passed around, and so Donovan plays a song, and then Dylan plays a song, and in that type of environment... If you've been in that type of environment, you know everyone has a different type of style, everyone has a different voice, everyone has different abilities as a singer, as a songwriter, as a musician. The point is not to try to play your best thing ever to try to make everyone else look like an idiot. You're just having fun and you're celebrating the fact that you all like music, you all play music, you're all having a drink, you're all a little tipsy, you're all being silly, you're all having a good time. And it's about like the camaraderie of artists and people who are creative in, in the same medium sharing their love of that medium. And it's, I just, it's like, I just don't buy this bullshit narrative that, that they were using Donovan essentially to like make Dylan look better and to like show how great of a songwriter Dylan was at the expense of Donovan. It just seems like nonsense to me, especially with the new evidence unearthed by the Criterion Blu-ray. So um, these are the two editions of Don't Look Back I have. That's me rambling about Bob Dylan and Donovan. Thank you for watching. Like I said earlier, you can subscribe if you feel like it. You can like this video. You can comment on this video. Let us know what you think about the whole Donovan situation. Um, we're going to do an unboxing of this, so keep your eyes peeled for that on the channel. You can see all the insides, the, um, the liner notes, etc., etc. Thank you for watching. I have been Will. This has been Vinyl Appreciation Society, and we will see you next time. <laughs>